Hi guys, Toby Bakri here. Um, I play the character of Balola in Gangs of Lagos. The badass gift. Echo was a pivotal fighter. I play the character Nino Luwo of Isaleko, aka Nino. My name is Olao Timifakunle, and I play Kazim. Kazo, they call him in Gangs of Lagos. Kadara, destiny. Who decides where we are born, the life we have. When I was a baby, it was a premonition that I would not only become a street king. But I will die young like my father. Why you for lie? Why you for lie? Why you for lie? Saleko is a jungle. Everyone does what they must to survive. The rules of the streets were simple. Be a lion, boy. No one leaves. I played the character Tenny. Tenny's character was like one of the easiest, if you ask me. It was a baby girl life. <laughs> I mean, rich father, yeah, gangster, but rich father had everything going on for her. Filming in Nisaleko, I didn't really have a lot of scenes in Nisaleko, but the few that I was privileged to go there to watch, it was a very beautiful experience. I had goosebumps, like I had literal goosebumps. My most exciting um, moment of the film would be, I think it was an accident scene that we shot. They had to actually raise the car and pull off the jerk, and I thought my life was over. Every day was exciting. That's what I love about gangs of Lagos. There was no day that was better than the other. Every day has its ups and downs but eventually we always went home at the end of the day achieving what we came out to achieve. So every day was beautiful in that regard. Shooting in Isaleko was an amazing experience. Very different and by the end we felt like we were all family. Um, some of the people from Isaleko are part of our film and I hope and fingers crossed, I hope they feel as proud of this film as we are as well. Hi, my name is Chike Zabazo Sebuka, popularly known as Chike. I play the character of Ifi in Gangs of Lagos. Ifi, I keep saying he's a sweet guy, so yeah, I haven't dressed like that today. Calm, no arms, no issues. Um, if you trust him, very, very loyal. And um, I don't know if that went well for him. And definitely, yes, you see me more. I've been doing this since 2018, so this is just one of. Hello there, my name is Odua Damilola Ogunsi, and I play the role of Ekun in Gangs of Lagos. Crime action thriller, best thing to come out on Hollywood in many years to come. And Mike's most exciting part of it was when we had to do the stunts. So there's, you, you're going to see some amazing fight sequence, real fight sequence. We, some we shot for three days, some we shot for four days. And um, Echo was a pivotal fighter. So yes, you're going to see that and you're going to love it. Hi everyone, my name is Funke Williams and I play the role of Blessing and Gangs of Lagos. So as for my most exciting time on set, it will be, it will be the, the fight scenes because it was very, you know, like he had, he needed a lot of adrenaline. It was very exciting having to do all of those things. I'd never done that before. I never even used to work out, work out. But the fact that we had to do practice before this, before the movie itself, was amazing. Hi, my name is Ty of Aniro. You know, Luo is a kingpin, a gang leader, a loved person, a respected person, a feared person, a good guy and a bad guy. One of the most exciting moments for me on set was when I had to tell Pasuma to get out. And Pasuma is a real gangster, real life gangster. If Pasuma tells people to move, they will move, you know? And then it felt real, really good, you know, knowing that I was acting, but I, I got to tell a real gangster, you know, to move, and he moved. Hi, my name is Demi Bango, and I'm one of the executive producers of the Amazon Prime production Gangs of Lagos. Um, it, was an, it was a great production to be a part of, both being an actor and a producer on the film. Uh, the talent that's involved in this film, both in front of and behind the camera, is some of the best you will find on the continent. Uh, Jade Oshiberu is a beast. You know, um, from every film she's made has been has been a masterpiece and this is no different so for me it was a no-brainer to come on board with the project um what to expect from the project you're in for a ride you're in for an emotional ride you're gonna have fun you're gonna laugh you're gonna cry i know everybody says that but i was on set and i was crying so trust me you that are watching in your house you're gonna cry but you're gonna have a great time my most exciting moment in gangs of lagos was when i told the character Oba to look after my daughter and I said to him in Yoruba if anything touches my daughter guide and guard her with your life my name is Yemoli and I played Muri in the gangs of Lagos my most exciting time on set has to be where I conquered the emotional part of me you know so it was really amazing to watch myself cry on that set Kadara destiny who decides where we are born the life we have when I was a baby, it 
does the premonition that will not only become a street king. But I will die young like my father. Why for lie? Why for lie? Why is it lie? Saleko is the jungle. Everyone does what they must to survive. The rules of the streets were simple. It was the best of times in Saleko, but nothing good lasts long. They say kings are never buried alone. I'm the man already. Today I'm wearing a Maya Tafel head to toe. It's a three piece. And you know, sleeveless with the tattoos and all that. I had to give them that special touch. The theme is a one bed gangster, and I wanted to just keep it simple and still look like a little gangster. So, yeah, that's really pretty much. Tonight, I'm representing Owen Bear, my white damas, because I'm ready to come here to come and have some fun. It's my party tonight. I'm wearing my own brand, Tire for Anero. My shoes, my Agbada, everything, you know, styled by myself. I'm wearing an Asho Kid blazer from Baseboard. Uh, the Asho Kid from Baseboard, the blazer was designed by Outspoken. I'm wearing Mac with our Igbo attire. Tonight, I am wearing an cranberry. I was styled by Damola. I have gone for cool gangster. You don't see me coming gangster. I'm one of the boys gangster, but I give you enough sexy to know that I, I, I'm female as well. So. And of course, I'm putting on uh, a daily paper two-piece. It's a UK brand on the black LV shoe. I'm wearing Encards. Encards is a Nigerian designer. My makeup was done by Mary J. Black. I'm styled by Sheum. Uh, my gele was tied by Eminence. Beauty by Picture Me Perfect Beauty. And uh, my shoes are up. Make sure that you watch Gangs of Lagos showing on Amazon Prime. Jackpot to Prime video. That's all I'm going to tell you. Jackpot to Prime video. Straight up. Kadara. Destiny. Who decides where we are born? The life we have. When I was a baby, there was a premonition that I would not only become a street king. <laughs> but I would die young like my father. Why for lie? Why for lie? Why is the jungle. Everyone does what they must to survive. The rules of the streets were simple. It was the best of times in Zaleko, but nothing good last long. They say kings are never buried alone. I'm the man already. I'm the One day, the eyes will open to their power, and there will be no hiding place for the wicked. they know absolutely nothing about. Kadara, destiny. Who decides where we are born? The life we have. Not already. Don't be nervous. I see your hands are sweaty.
we're back. This is season two of The Olive and we're really excited. Hi guys, my name is Colette Otusheso, executive producer of The Olive. Hi, my name is Ibrahim Suleiman and I play the character Anayo DK on The Olive. Guys, trust me, one word, captivating. If you thought season one was something, wait till you see season two. I play the role of Dr. Ayodele. I have a new addition, I have a character in it and I, I'm really looking forward to watching him. Hi, my name is Joseph Mamodu, I'm an actor. And a model, and I'm right here on the premiere of The Olive Season 2. I'm happy to be here at the media party of The Olive Season 2. Season 1, yeah, it basically is focused on the story of a man who is recently widowed and he has three teenage kids and he's trying to keep up because he's looking for a new job. The family business is still trying, he's still trying to run the family business. And he has three teenagers that he's trying to, to help navigate the world. And it's a, new, it's a different world from the world that he grew up in. But then it starts off, you know, building the characters, introducing them, letting us know who they are, what they're going through, what their motivations are. And then it starts to build up. It gets to the point where he starts to find out things about his personal life that he had no idea about. Which is where the problem is, because he's clueless. He's practically clueless. So it ends at a, you know, very critical moment when we find out that his dead wife is not quite dead. Season two is us focusing on how she's not dead, why she's not dead, and why she hasn't come out to say that she's not dead. Meanwhile, Anna has figured out that she might, you know, there's something going on. So he's running around trying to find, you know, trying to put all the pieces together to figure out what's going on, and it is insane. Season one introduced the story. Season two is where everything goes crazy, and I'm really excited for it. I'm looking forward to it. You start getting into fights, and now this! You never defend me! Mom was the only one that's always defending me! She's the only one that truly cares, and she's not here now, is she? We're gonna have some fun tonight! <laughs> I got you something. The nurse told me you were back. I didn't believe it. <sighs> well, now you can see that they were right. Oh, don't be a baby about it now. Haribi played Toby in season one, and... To him and his family, Yolanda Okereke, um, God bless you, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Funny thing, in season one, I auditioned for this role, and it was between me and Caribbean, and I would say the better man won. He did a great job, and I feel very privileged to be playing the character in season two. Toby has his own story. He has his marital woes. He has so many things going on in his life, and Toby is hiding something. So watch out for him. It was great fun. I enjoyed myself immensely. Um, I like playing characters like that, that have that are multifaceted. You know, not not a straight line goodie, not a straight line baddie. And the Dr. Ayotele is a very interesting character because she is actually keeping a very dark secret. And uh, I mean, maybe, maybe, just maybe by the end of the season, you might find out what that secret is. And she's also, <clears throat> she's a bit scandalous as well, might I say. But yeah, I'm super excited to be here. And Olive is such a great, um, it's such a great series. I watched season one and I was blown away. I was like, this is, this is like a, it's, it's like a, tr a thriller. Like I love it so much. And then, you know, the auditions came about and I was like, yeah, I need to audition for this. I need to be in season two and here I am. Yes, my name is Fala Remy, I'm gonna be at it. And I play the character Dozier. So my experience working on the Oli season two, it was nice, it was simple. Make sure you watch the Oli season two. And if you haven't seen season one, you should see season one so you can understand what's happening in season two. Welcome you to the Olive season two premiere. If you are an avid watcher of our content and if you've watched Olive season one, you will know that we ended with a bang. So we're all so excited to see what happens in season two. I'm not gonna tell you too much, but what I will tell you, it is amazing. We have some amazing cast members. We have new cast members and we have storylines that you would not even dream of. So you gotta watch The Olive. Hi, my name is Faith Stanley and I play the role of Adora DK on The Olive season one and two. So Adora from season one, basically she was um, finding herself like she wasn't really sure where she wanted to go. She had just lost her mom and she was trying to understand life. But in season two, you see more of her finding herself, even though she's still very much 
stupid. <laughs> yeah, she finds herself in season two, and there's a lot more story to to her. But I don't want to give too much away. So if you've not seen season two, you have to go and see season one so you can catch up and enjoy the story. Because from season one, there's a slow burner, and then season two just makes everything beautiful. Hi, my name is Teresa Edemi Simon, and I play the character Ehi on the Olive. Season one was an amazing roller coaster. As if you've watched season one, you know that Ehi died. But by the end of the season, you realize mm, she's not really dead. If you haven't watched it, go watch it so you, you, you can pick up on the story. Playing Ehi was very difficult because she's, when you watch the show, you'll understand she's not one way, she's very multi dimensional. So it was, I had to really get into that headspace because she was playing different people in one person. And no, I don't think I share those similarities with her in real life, but she's very driven and I know that I'm driven, so maybe yeah, I share that with her. It was hard, but I thank, I thank the directors and the AD and the entire team for helping me get into character and staying in the role. So, but yeah, it was an exciting one and I'm, I'm glad I played it. Everything that I've done is for my family. This is a monarchy leadership rests with the family that has the ledger. This book is very important to the family and the business. Kili's got into some trouble at school. Is he okay? Kili, after everything, after everything, you start getting into fights and now this? You never defend me. Mom was the only one that's always defending me. She's the only one that truly cares and she's not here now, is she? I'm gonna have some fun tonight. <laughs> I got you something. The nurse told me you were back. I didn't believe it. Uh, well, now you can see that they were right. Oh, don't be a baby about it now. Adora. One of the most exciting moments I had on set was when I was going to deliver something at night. Um, it was it was a parcel, but I had to really behave like a dodgy person somewhere in Lekki at night. Like, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Low-key, like scared, because I don't know, like uh, are some uh, like actual hoodlums about to jump out at us as well. But it was really like um, immersive because I felt like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm actually, you know, doing this, um, and I was just really, I was really happy that I could that break down the character because the character has so many layers, and as I said, she has so many secrets. So um, yeah, that was that was definitely my most ex exciting is when I was driving around at night because it was quite liberating because I don't really drive around at night. Working on season two, I, one of the things that excited me the most um, was the fact that they, we now had, you know, more backstories about practically every character that had been introduced earlier. So we now got to know them a little, not just a little, but we got, we, we got to know them a lot better. And then, you know, we now actually had an opportunity to shoot scenes with Auntie Joker Silva and she's a phenomenon. Like the woman is just class, and we, it's it's such an honor to have her on this project. This is actually the Olive is actually the third project that she and I are doing together. And every time I work with her, I'm just like, yo, like I used to see her on TV, and now I'm working with her, it's it's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Every moment of set is exciting. Whenever I'm with my daddy, Brian Suleiman, or I'm with Joker Silva, or I'm with Stephanie Coca, everybody is just, we're like a whole, we're like one family, and every, every time it's just fun and games. The most exciting time on set, I would have to say, was my very first scene that I shot. And for me, I'll tell you that the first scene I shot was the last scene in the movie. And God did that task me emotionally. I remember shooting that scene. I can't tell you who I shot it with because that would be giving it away. But I shot that scene and at the end of the scene, everybody was clapping. Some people were crying. And trust me, you want to watch out for that. It was a really smooth ride. I wouldn't say there were any challenges. The production team was um, top 10. They did, they did everything to, to get us in the, in the right frame of mind and to, to put in our best work. So yeah, I had an exciting time playing this role. And I would say my most exciting moment in the show for season one would be when, the, at the last episode, when we realized that Ehi didn't die. That was so shocking. I loved the reaction that the audience had to it. And even I was excited when I read the script and I got to that point. I'm pretty sure that there will be more than just season two. Um, and I'm excited about it. The entire cast is excited about it because everybody's character is like almost 
you know, what's, what am I doing next? What's my character becoming? You know, and all of that. So, the same way that the, the viewers are asking questions, the cast is asking questions because they don't tell us nothing until we do the table read for that season. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, characters die and we don't know who's dying. Like, it's, it's wild. It's wild. My name is Hakim Mogu. I'm an actor, of course, you already know. And you're here for the Private King of Olive 2. Uh, tonight looking crazy already. People are here. Uh, the abyss is great. Uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing my guy, my very good guy, Michael A. Joy. So on this one, you know, so we are here to give support, enjoy ourselves too. Olive 2, I'm sure Olive 1 was a great success. And that's why we have Olive 2 here now. My name is F.A.Y. Lillian and I'm here for the Olive Season 2. Hmm, yeah, I watched Season 1. Season 1 was very intriguing, suspense, you know, it was awesome. I really am looking forward to season two. I want to see what they bring. Hey guys, my name is Taya Arumoro. I'm an actor and I am at the premiere and screening of the Olive season two. I'm looking forward to seeing Michael Ejo, who is like my guy. Um, amazing actor, great performer. Um, Philip Francis as well. That's like my G all day, any day. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to interpret this new season and fit in you know, from the first season, which was amazing and they had really good reviews. That's why I'm here, you know, just support my people and accelerate as well. Hi guys, my name is Mojibade Show. I'm the Lady MC, I'm a compare, I'm a TV presenter, I'm an actor. I'm looking forward to seeing Ibrahim Suleiman, I'm a fan, so I'm looking forward to seeing him in full action, in display. I mean, I understand he's the lead character male, so I'm looking forward to all the action he's bringing. My name is Joseph Momodu, I'm an actor. And a model, and I'm right here on the premiere of the Olive season two. <laughs> season one was sweet, oh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. The acting, the suspense, the setting, the setup, everything. I love it. Do you have any idea what this is? I have no idea what that is. I think I have found someone who is interested in investing in your business. Have you heard from Mrs. Kijo? No, sir. What did you do with Mama Kijo? If we run out of C20, which is happening as we speak, we'll have a huge problem on our hands. You do know what they say about unwanted guests. They are most welcome when they leave. I'm not here to listen to your old cackling, Madame Elaine. I dare you to produce the ledger. I'm wearing black on purpose because this is a very dark, dark series. Um, people die and, you know, things happen. Have you ever people seen people come back to life? Wink, wink, yes. Um, I'm wearing G Nation by my brother. His name is Tolu Olafumio. And this, my wife got it for me, I don't know where. And then my shoes are, uh, you know, I mean, I have to represent. I love sneakers. I'm wearing a Jordan hat that was given to me by my best friend, Adenike Adebayo. And I'm wearing a Shana Dashiki they call this thing. This was also given to me by one of my best friends, Abdul. I'm wearing ripped jeans from ASOS and I don't remember the shoe where they were, but now fine shoe. And I just literally put something together. I just took something from my closet and put it together and it worked out. I decided to wear good old Zara. So this is a Zara outfit, top and bottom. The shoes are Christian Louboutins, my favorites. And um, yes, and I'm wearing God's love, which is all over me. I think that's the best outfit to ever have. I'm wearing Stevante. That is my friend's brand. A girl, by the way. I picked up this top. This pants was made by John by John. It was made for another outfit, but I paired it with the top and voila. I'm wearing this caftan from Black Beard Clothing. They could have this thing in two hours. Just two hours, okay? They put this out in two hours and we're here rocking it. And people are liking it. This is from my wardrobe. I threw this on myself. I mean, we're trying to wake up flawless. Two pieces by Henry Yuduku. And those are Tommy Hilfiger sneakers. I'm wearing Zephans and Co. I'm wearing Phi. Phi designer, Phi underscore Phi world. such an amazing journey 
and I can't wait for the world to experience it. If you guys have not seen the olive, you're really missing. Like you have to see it. If you've not seen it too, like I said before, watch season one because it's a slow burner. It's amazing. Every single person that has seen it fell in love with the olive. It's only good comments, I promise you. You do not want to miss this. It is amazing. I want to tell all the viewers at home to make sure you watch this series. It's nothing like you've seen before. It's very exciting. It will keep you at the edge of your seat. Like I'm being serious, you won't you won't have a dull moment in this series. Um, and it's it's um, one that you could watch with your friends, your family, and you know tell all your people online to watch Olive season two. And if you haven't seen season one, go and catch up and watch season one. Okay, guys, if you love season one, I guarantee you that season two will leave you like this. I'm telling you. Thank you, Spice TV, for having me. Amazing reasons to watch this. Don't miss out. Thank you, Spice. Every thing that I've done is for my family. This is a monarchy, and the leadership rests with the family that has the ledger. This book is very important to the family and the business. Kili's got into some trouble at school. Is he okay? Kili, after everything, after everything, you start getting into fights, and now this? You never defend me. Mom was the only one that's always defending me. She's the only one that truly cares, and she's not here now, is she? We're gonna have some fun tonight. <laughs> I got you something. The nurse told me you were back. I didn't believe it. <sighs> well, now you can see that they were right. Oh, don't be a baby about it now. It's very creepy, don't you think? Do you have any idea what this is? I have no idea what that is. I think I have found someone who is interested in investing in your business. Have you heard from Mrs. Kijo? No, sir. What did you do with Mama Kijo? If we run out of C20, which is happening as we speak, we'll have a huge problem on our hands. Do you know what they say about unwanted guests? They are most welcome when they leave. I'm not here to listen to your old cackling, Madame Elaine. I dare you to produce the ledger 